why do you regain the weight you lose after dieting? No matter if it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus pounds, science suggests as much as 90% of people regain the weight. We're gonna share in this video how to be in that 10% that doesn't. I lost 260 pounds. Oh, sorry, I was 260 pounds, lost 60 pounds over two decades ago. I've kept it off for 20 years running, and it boils down to some of these strategies. I'm Mitch Keller Fitness. We help busy parents like myself burn belly fat, keep the weight off for life without fad diets or starving on stupid diets, all right? So let's go into what happens and why it's so common. Well, first off, a slower basal metabolic rate. Naturally, if you weigh less at the end of your diet, you require less calories than you did at day one when you were 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds heavier than you are today. However, there is science to suggest that someone who's dieted down to say 180 pounds has to eat less calories than someone who's always been 180 pounds. We don't know for certain what causes that. There's an adaptive response certainly to dieting where you know, as a survival mechanism, your body's trying to conserve calories and slows down your resting metabolism. Maybe you lose more muscle than ideal so that when you get to that goal weight, it's very difficult to maintain without eating less and less. So we're going to fix that. Part two, though, is this set point theory. There is some science. I wouldn't say this is completely conclusive, but they suggest the body has a natural weight range where it's been most of its adult life, known as a set point and it's trying to maintain within that narrow range. So after losing weight, if you do things wrong, if you crash diet, there's this pull to get back to where your body is comfortable, even if it doesn't serve your best interests of the long term. We all know obesity is a risk factor for a million things we don't want. So regardless of that, your body doesn't have necessarily your best interests in mind long term, but in the short term, survival system at play. I lost 60 pounds over two decades ago. I still find it fairly easy to regain fat if I'm not careful. For the last year, because of some various setbacks I'm not going to go into, I gained some muscle, great, but I gained almost 12 pounds of fat. So a pound of fat per month without being too really out of my routine, just eating more food. Now, the science will also show increased hunger and cravings in those who lose a lot of weight. And that's, again, the survival mechanism at play. Hunger, cravings, driven by hormonal changes, that leads to overeating and weight regain. Um, hormones such as ghrelin, which stimulates hunger, and leptin, which signals fullness. There's that yin and yang with the, between those two, and it gets skewed too far in the ghrelin camp in so many of us who have lost a lot of weight. Another thing is fat cells shrink, but they don't ever burn off. They are always there once you've developed them. They just get smaller. And that's another reason that would suggest formerly overweight individuals who have a lot of fat cells, even if they shrunk, gain weight faster than someone who's never had, you know, never been severely overweight. They just have more fat cells. So that as you increase calories above what you maintain, you need to maintain your weight, those fat cells refill. And some suggest the faster you've lost the weight, the more speedy those fat cells re re refill, okay? The other piece to the puzzle though is muscle loss. The people that go on a Zempic, lose weight fast and they're celebrating every pound on the scale that can be a deterrent to obviously your resting metabolism later on because now you've got less fat in your body but certainly less muscle and now how much calories is your body burning at rest way less than you were used to so that's why you want to preserve muscle mass as best you can through resistance training sufficient protein good diet all these things i'm going to go into in a second just to wrap up the last few is you know, environmental factors. Maybe you went on a diet you couldn't sustain. So you returned to old he eating habits because you don't have endless amounts of willpower. Maybe it's the environment of the people that are around you that obviously have not ideal habits. And just by osmosis, you pick those up again. And that gradually leads to weight regain. So it's trying to control your environment and developing a new identity about what you personally adhere to that's going to set you up for long-term success. So what to do? Number one, lose weight more slowly in the first place. If you minimize those metabolic adaptations and the muscle loss by losing, say, no more than one pound per week in most cases, and you take, you know, time off, I wouldn't call it reckless abandon, but strategic maintenance breaks where you increase calories and maintenance for two to four weeks after, say, a 12-week dieting period, and you continue on the journey, 
that's going to minimize some of that massive hunger increases that happen, slow down your metabolism to some degree, it'll happen still, and then minimize muscle loss. So that's that combination that's going to at least set you up for the most likely level of success by putting yourself in a good position to maintain without having to starve yourself. Number two, though, is to maintain high activity loads. If you've been training hard and getting a lot of steps in to lose the weight, you're going to have to continue to adopting those behaviors to keep the weight off. Exercise, not a very good tool at driving fat loss alone, but it's an excellent tool in maintaining the weight loss. Give yourself more calorie breathing room if you burn it off and you're active and you're building muscle and all those good things. Number three is the 80-20 rule. Your new game plan is to stop chasing 100% all in week after week and just avoid those 0% weeks where you completely abandon the plan and your, your good nutritional habits. So focusing on being good 80% of the time is good enough to maintain. And if you get into a good routine with that, maybe, you, can, you know, you take some time off, you go on a weekend away, eat to your heart's content, but you get back on track on Monday and most weeks look pretty good. That's what's going to serve you well over the long run. Lastly, just some real research from the National Weight Control Registry. It's a group that spends its time researching and 10,000 people have successfully lost weight here in, I think it's in the States kept it off for years. The key theme of those people is actually surprisingly stuff that most diets don't allow you to adhere to. Eat, they eat carbs, they enjoy breakfast, so they don't fast. They avoid like the real restrictions and the ketos and all those extreme methods that have good results in the short term, but bad long-term sustainability. And they limit, but don't completely remove the ultra processed foods. That's the old elephant in the room. Most foods that are in our environment these days are ultra processed ultra tasty, high, high calorie. And we need to minimize that whole food, single ingredient stuff. And then that last 20% or so is the foods that you indulge in. So most dad, you know, bad diets don't fit that by default, which should tell you something. And then the last piece is not to overlook the importance of shifting your identity and those simple habits that require are required every day to get you to fully commit to this process. So I know I'll never go back to 260 pounds fully because my identity is a chat to being someone who enjoys working out, who eats their protein, who drinks their water, who gets their sleep, exercises, walks enough to maintain good active activity levels. And that's really the secret is being at it long enough to develop a new identity around being a healthy person and not the unhealthy old version of you that you're faking it for a while, but you know you're gonna end up back there. All right, so hopefully this video has helped. If you want a free calculator that sets your calories and your protein, we call it the CAP flexibility framework. You follow that, you're gonna lose that one pound a week standard and get great results without having to restrict foods needlessly. All right, so drop that. Uh, there's a link in the description below to get in on that. Talk soon.